We had these bikes a little while ago in wind tunnel testing down in Silverstone, where we found that the frames, the the the, the truncated foil uh, aerofoil um, tubing, uh, actually produced a 28% less drag than a traditional round frame set. So that is the two frame sets both inhabiting the same design, the same geometry, the SLR and the SL. Together incorporated with that level five integrated handlebar and stem, uh, offering a 40% less drag was the results that we found there the, over your standard round handlebar and stem combination. And offering you that aesthetically clean look in the disc model with all the cables hidden inside the handlebar, diving straight into the frame to its allocated points. Um, these models are available on custom color, so you could customize the spec the way that you want it to be. Models starting from 1,799 pounds all the way up. Our model showcased here today in this beautiful blue and gold color scheme is the lightest bike that we produce here at Ribble, weighing in at 5.4 kilograms. This bike is available online, that SLR frame set, so nice and lightweight. Perfect for hill climbs if that is what you are looking for, a nice lightweight bike. Alternatively, the Endurance SL Disc, our Bike of the Year award winner, uh, is one of our best sellers. It's the bike that you will need for your, for, for your club runs, for your summer bike replacement, your, your, your do-it-all road bike, carbon road bike, sportive racing. If you are looking to drop some watt bombs and to get into the, to the right uh, uh, gear of racing the bike, the Endurance SL is definitely the one to look for. Um, also, both these models are available in rim brake caliper versions and disc brake models as well. Now, I know, Katie, you have got the Endurance SL with the rim brake version, so that's a great bike. I mean, nice and lightweight. How, do, how are you experiencing your bike? Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. So, yeah, I've been out again on it um, in a nice summer yes. uh, weather that we've been having. So, yeah, it's a really nice light bike to ride especially for the for the hill climbs yes yes we've got this disc model on display here tonight of the cosmic wheels and that SRAM red axis 12 speed group set coming in at only 7.6 kilograms and that's a lightweight bike that's a really lightweight bike and a nice bike to ride as well so viewers if you have any questions regarding these two models please fire them through i'm going to move on to the r872 which is our other carbon fiber road bike platform if you are looking to migrate from an aluminium frame to a carbon frame, the R872 fits that bill, fits that gap there for that sportive riding bike. Now, one of the questions we had previously was, what is the main differences between the two? And I'm sure that it's going to be prompted now as well. So let's move on to that question and have a bit of a look on it. As we can see from the design of the two bikes behind me, both of them, you can visually see the differences between the two bikes. The R872 featuring that longer head tube with a shorter top tube, putting the cockpit of the rider in a much more sportive setup, a much more upright riding position. Whereas on the SL, you have a much longer stretched up, getting into a more aerodynamically tucked in position for racing the bike. So with that said, moving from an aluminium bike to a first carbon road bike, we can see that the R872 is exactly that. It's a comfort rider, for those long Audax rides that you want to do, apart from the sportifs and the club runs on Sundays, it's a great little bike to have. Fully mudguard compatible, so it could even double up as a carbon winter bike, both in rim brake and disc brake models available, and able, capable of taking 28C tires. Now, that, that's a perfect combination for a great bike, for all-purpose carbon road bike. Um, these bikes are lightweight, they're durable, and they are very, very comfortable to ride. Katie, do we have any questions from our viewers? We do. So Ethan has asked, do we ship our bikes to South Africa? We most definitely at the moment do ship our bikes to South Africa. It does take some time, obviously, in the current situation we are in. Thank you for your question, Ethan, my friend. Um, that is a very good one. We do. Our bikes is internationally available. If you scroll right to the bottom of our page, you will see the delivery section with the different countries we ship our bikes to and their various costs involved as well. Uh, Callum has asked, what is the benefit of a carbon monocoque frame? So the monocoque carbon construction is like it said, uh, it's a one piece carbon fiber construction of the bike, which makes it more stiffer 
and more, uh, a, a more power, the, the power transfer of, the bike, of your power is much more direct. So the stiffness of the bike comes into play. The multi-layer construction of the bike obviously adds weight as well. So monocoque carbon construction is obviously much more lighter. Aaron has asked, what is the weight of the SL and how does that compare to the R872? So the weight of the SL really comes down to the finishing kit that you put on it, Aaron. Um, it depends whether you go for a 105 group set, a Altegra DI2 group set, the SRAM red group set here, like we discussed, coming in at 7.6 kilos. So it really is difficult to say exactly what finishing kit you put on it that gives it its overall weight at the end of the day. The two frames, if you build them up spec for spec, does have a weight variance of about 300 grams between the two. But again, it comes down to the finishing kit that goes on the bike. Adam on YouTube is asking which bike we'd recommend for a larger guy that still loves to try um, for a KOM. That's a very good question. Yes, it comes down to, to your personal fitness, I would say, at the end of the day. Both these bikes are capable of taking a, a, a large a variety of riders. Our frame size is going from extra small to extra large as well. And with that said, the finishing kit that you put on it, the gear ratios that you put on it. If you are chasing KOMs and you're looking for a nice, fast, light road bike and you are still flexible as well, the Endurance SL is definitely the one to go for. And what weight would that, um, the, the weight of the rider, what would that accommodate? So the rider weight limits really do come down to wheel constructions, like we said, but the Endurance SL does come with a rider weight limit of 100 kilograms. Uh, what height does the SL frame cater to? The SL frame set up into extra large, which is about six foot two, six foot three. Uh, Jack has asked, which bike are the pro team riding and can I buy it? We have discovered that, but yeah. Most definitely, yes, Jack. The pro team is online available for you to purchase. It is there uh, under the product page of the SLR, but they are riding the SLR frame set, which is our lightweight frame set in that pro team build and the paint job as well that you will be able to get. Those bikes start at 5999, so please head over, go have a look at that bike there, yes. Just a couple more questions. Yeah. Uh, so Carl is after an SL disc, not sure on sizing, 170 centimetres tall and a 73.5 inside leg. Any advice on sizing? It's a lot of information to process <laughs> so quickly on the spot. Um, so it's 170 centimetres tall. Yeah. On the SL. On Give the me SL, the, yeah, the yeah. inseam leg measurements again. 73.5 centimetres. 73. That's tall. That's very long. Um, I'm going to say a medium frame size. Again, it is difficult without seeing you to see how your body geometry is allocated. You could have a longer torso and a shorter leg or a sh longer leg and a shorter torso. So I'm going to say a medium frame. But please send us an email through where we will be able to pick it up and then mock it out exactly in the showroom where we will then be able to respond with a more concrete answer. And Shahid has asked, what is the lightest bike we can offer for around seven kilos and what price would that come in at? At around seven kilos, you will be looking at the Endurance SL range, uh, the rim brake caliper version. You could look there at the, the Mavic carbon wheel upgrade, even the level carbon wheel upgrades there on an Altegra DI2 system. I predict that it will come in at around seven, 7.1 kilograms. Price-wise, please head over to the product page. It's impossible to remember all the prices of all the different specs and you will find an exact quote online. Chris is asking, do we offer Campag on the SL? We unfortunately do not offer Campag on the SL, no. Pete has asked, what are the wheels there on the SLR currently on that? Uh, these are the lightweight wheels. So they are a aftermarket wheel that we get in for our product builds, but it is available to purchase. As you see it here online, this bike is there. The super light, lightweight build one, is over there. One very quick last question. Um, we've been asked, someone is riding the London to Paris in August, which bike would you recommend? London to Paris in August. Yes, that's a tricky one. How fast do you want to do it in and do you want to be comfortable? Both these bikes will be capable of doing a ride of that caliper. Again, I'm going to come back to the point previously. If you are a cyclist, if you are flexible, if you are already uh, pushing out a substantial FTP and riding capability, the Endurance SL Disc or SL would be the bike of choice. If you are more of the comfort and comfort riding, then you would have to look at the R872 range. That's it for questions for now. Perfect. So we are going to move on to some of our other bike, 
the road bikes in our range and then have a chat about them as well. Perfect, so moving over to some more of the road bikes that we do, we have here on display our Reynolds 725 Endurance 725 disc model and our Endurance AL model. So this is our aluminum disc brake bike and then our 725 Reynolds steel bike as well. Both these models are available in a rim brake version as well and both these models are capable of taking full mud guards. So now we're again going back to the topic we had previously for that winter trainer, that winter bike, that commuter that everybody wants and or is, is looking for. Now, personally, I have a 725 steel frame bike. They are very, very comfortable to ride. They are not heavy at all. With a full monocoque carbon front fork, these bikes come in at about 9.2, 9.6 kilograms. So it is not a heavy bike to ride. It generates a lot of power, it's comfortable over long distances, and it absorbs the road vibrations really, really well. The aluminium frame on the other side, on, on the other, uh, uh, on the top of the box, that's a 6061 aluminium, lightweight and stiff, durable bike to ride, perfect for city commuting with that full mud, mud guard compatibility, maybe a saddle pack, you're perfect for the commuting through the winter times and riding. Uh, continue tra your training through the winter months as well. Uh, these models are available in different colors as well through our bike building process where you will be able to customize them, not just through spec, but through colors as well. So please head over to the product pages to have a look at those. Do we have some questions on these two models there? Yeah, so geometry wise, how do they differ than the other models that we've just been talking about? So perfect, first of all, the differences is the frame construction material. We, we moved from our carbon fiber models now to a steel frame and to an aluminium frame. Uh, the other big difference again comes into the geometry of the bikes. They are different to the Endurance SL and to the R872. Uh, the steel frame bikes and the aluminium bikes, again, mimicking that sportif setup with a high front end, longer head tube on the front, uh, again, offering a more comfortable sitting position on the bike for the purpose of commutes and then also incorporating long Audax rides. Uh, for our Ribble followers out there who has more than one Ribble, everybody remembers the blue little Audax bike. They share the same geometry to that. It's a very comfortable bike, something you can take anywhere and just enjoy riding your bicycle outside. And would a steel or an alloy bike be more suitable for a heavier rider? Um, it really comes down to personal preference. I would say the steel bike most definitely will suit you, uh, uh, go offer you more comfort in riding long distances. Uh, the steel, obviously, we have the saying in the office, steel is real. Uh, so, yes, I would say a steel bike, definitely, for a heavier rider uh, to, to, to give it a try, yeah. And what's the tyre clearance on the 725, and can it fit mud guards? Mm, most definitely. So, both these bikes, like I mentioned, can take full mud guards. Those are full mud guards with a 25mm tyre. Without one, you are able to fit a 28mm tyre on them. So as you can hear, you can fit a nice wide tire on there, run it at a lower pressure for added comfort to the bike and added absorption of the road surfaces, just adding to the overall comfort riding of the experience. That's all the questions there are for now. That's perfect. That's outstanding. So yes, that is our road range here. We are going to move on now to a video uh, for you to have a look at, and then we will continue talking about the rest of our range. Perfect.
versatile all-rounder that we produce here at Ribble. The entire family here on showcase, starting again with the Reynolds 725 steel there at the back, the 6061 aluminium body in the front, the Thai, and then the CGR SL, that carbon fiber model over there. Now, these bikes all share the same geometry in comfort and in riding positions. Where they come into play is the versatility of the bike. I myself came down the stairs one morning. I had four bikes in my living room, and I said to my wife, enough is enough. So I sold all my bikes, and I bought a CGR with two wheel sets. I bought a 700C wheel set and a 650B wheel set for gravel rides so that I can have one bike that offers me both of my most favorite riding styles. With that said, we can see here how it is showcased as well in that 700C wheel here capable of taking a 45 millimeter tire on a CGR SL. That is for your gravel racer that you have those wheels available. And then here on the AL, we can see that 650B wheel built with a 650B by 47 millimeter tire capable of going up to a two inch mountain bike tire. The versatility of these bikes really come into, into just that. It is what they are meant to do for it. Both your, your gravel rides, your road rides, commuting bikes, bike packing as well. Full mudguard compatibility with pannier rack mounts as well. These guys are ready to take on anything. Katie, you've got the CGR tie, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Uh, how, how are you finding that? You've got the 2 by, uh, two by GRX on there, which is the, the new from Shimano group set gravel specific. And the 2 by 10 how's that serving you? I really, really like it. So, yeah, it's, I've got the same as you. I've got two sets of wheels. I've got one for roads. So I've been doing a lot of winter riding it with mud guards. I did the yeah. Festive 500 on it. So I did, like, a couple of back-to-back -back days, like 200Ks. And then, um, yeah, just whip the wheels off, swap them over, and then get off-road on them. That's yeah, it. I'm really liking it. That is brilliant. That's brilliant. I myself have the 725 steel bike. As I mentioned before, I have a steel bike. The CGR 725 is my bike with my two wheel set. And it is exactly that. If you are looking for a weekend trip, a weekend bike trip away, the CGR comes into play. The North Coast 500 jumps out at mind. We want to stick a, a frame bag on the bike with a handlebar bag and a, 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 a saddle pack and just go and disappear for a couple of days. Get out and go ride your bike. Now, this is a very exciting range. This range is one of our most popular sellers, and we are very excited, excuse me, very excited about it. Please feel free to fire some questions my way if you have some, and let's get them answered for you. Katie, do we have anything from our viewers? Yes, yeah, so Sam is saying, I'm struggling to choose between the materials available for the CGR. What are the ride property differences between them? Between the four? But yeah, between, between which, the four. which one. So, yeah, sure. yeah. Sam, that really does come into play about where you want to ride it, how you want to ride it, and what you want to use it for. See, if you are looking for a straight-out city commuter and something that you can go and ride over the weekends as well, as well, the 6061 aluminium and the 725 still definitely comes into play there. If you are looking more of a gravel racer, something that you can take to the Dirty River coming up in September and go and drop some watt bombs, the SL will come into play there. Something like a Tourer, for example, will be the CGR tie, perfect for that purpose. So really for the purpose that you want to use the bike for, will come into play on that. Uh, and needless to say, whichever CGR you choose for whichever purpose, it will not disappoint you. It is ready to take on anything that you might throw at it. I had a customer uh, talking to me a little bit earlier on last week, and he had just purchased the CGR AL. He's on his way to Iceland to go and do the Rift gravel race there. So, I mean, the versatility and the, the, the popularity of the bike is definitely there to do these types of things. So, yes. Really what you want to use it for is where it will come into play. So Dave is asking, he's wanting to get a CGR DI2, but wants to tweak the spec to suit him. How much alteration does Bike Builder offer? Uh, quite a lot, um, Dave, definitely there. The DI2 will be uh, uh, limited to the Endurance tie and the SL at the moment. Um, the 725 uh, does not, I'm afraid, unfortunately, take the I2 at the moment yet. So, yes, you are able to select that on those two builds there. But please have a look at the product pages with the different build specs available there on these models. Alex on YouTube is asking, what other color schemes can we offer on the CGR SL? And also, would we recommend 105 or a one by group set for a daily use bike? For daily use bike and custom color as well. Well, let's start with the custom color. There really is so many variables over there to choose from. If you have a look at the custom color program on our bike builder, 
you've got over 3 million choices there. So Sam, please feel free, take a couple of hours and have a play around there of the, on the different color schemes available. Group set wise for a daily use bike really depends on how much, how hilly is it? How far do you have to ride? Do you have a lot of hills in there? The one by system really comes into play from less maintenance point of view, an aesthetic look of it as well. And it does shake off the weight, obviously, off that front derailleur on there with the cables and the housing in it. But if you are living in a hilly city like Bath, for example, where you have really, really steep hills, a one by system might be difficult to turn over. So that is where your personal fitness will come into play. Uh, even though it is a one by system with a fairly low gear, a 42 42, which offers you a very nice gear, it could be still very hard to turn over. That one by that 42 by 42 is still a high low gear rather than a 34 32, for example, on a 105 group set, which offers you a lower gear. I know personally I have decided to go with the 105 for the reason of my two wheel sets. My road bike wheel set, when I put that in, I still want that top end gear to which I can ride in a group and stay with the group rather than spinning out, for example, on a one by system. So it is a decision that you're going to have to look at where you ride, how you ride the bike to make that versus a one by to a two by system. Jake is asking, do we offer any flat bar CGR builds? Flat bar CGR builds, unfortunately, is not available at the moment. Um, yes, yeah, we don't have those. We have the hybrid, which we are going to cover a little bit later. Uh, on there. So please stay tuned while we discuss that. Um, Brian is asking, will we be offering any more electric groups at options like GRX, DI2 or SRAM um, Force? SRAM Force definitely is available on the CGR SL as we can see here. Uh, is it Brian? Brian, yes. Obviously with the situation internationally going on, there has been delays on getting parts and uh, stock availability. So the GRX DI2, definitely in the future, our production team will be looking at that. At the moment, unfortunately, we do not have that to offer. And Sean, as I think this is more of a general question, do you think DI2 is worth the upgrade from a standard Ultegra from a usability and a financial perspective? I guess that's quite a, a personal. That, that, is a, that is a very personal. Katie, you on the money over there. That is a very personal one. Uh, mechanical system functions just as good. Uh, from a personal and financial point of view, you're really going to have to look at it. From a functionality point of view, yes, uh, the two systems in their own functions very, very well. The DI2 offering a very, very quick shift. The mechanical system offering very easy user friendliness. If a cable goes, you can replace it, for example. So it will be a personal choice to make on that one there, yes. One last question before we move mm. on. Um, what bar or stem upgrades are available? Sorry, say again. Uh, what bar and stem upgrades are available? So the bar and stem upgrades through the bike building process, and as you can see here, is quite vast. The integrated level 5 bar and stem combination will only be applicable to the CGR SL, but on the other models where we have a stereo tube coming through the head tube, there is a choice of carbon stems and handlebars, flared handlebars, lightweight uh, um, aluminium handlebars. So please have a look on the bike builder you will be able to make your selections there accordingly. So the questions are off now. Outstanding, perfect. So we are going to cut to another video and then move on with the rest of our range. Please stay tuned. I wanted a bike that was really versatile. I'm predominantly a road rider, so it, you know, mainly it would be set up for road, but I've got the option to stick some gravel tires on there and go a bit more off road. I've got the option to maybe go bike touring on it. It's a great commute option because it's, you know, it just does a bit of everything. Versatility really. So time on the bike usually is, is my time and it's a good escape. Clear your head and just get out and explore and find new routes. And it does have that adventure feel for me that I can go out and, and go to places I've not been before. We started off as a hobby. Uh, probably closely becoming a, an obsession rather than a hobby now. 
spending more time on a bike than I do off a bike these days and just ride to enjoy it. If I don't enjoy it, I don't do it. I suppose the good thing about the CGR is that it is as happy going out with the dog on the trails as it is, you know, joining joining up with a group ride, going out on the road. Uh, it's it literally will do do anything that you that you want it to do, really. I commute on a CGR. Uh, I've got the AL version, bright orange. Uh, it's running a Shimano 105 group set. Got Axiom wheels on there and G1 tyres because you know you can go anywhere on them. They're not draggy on the road. You can quite happily tap along at 21, 22 mile an hour. Good gearing ratios on it. So compact on the front for the steep climbs. Nice wide ranging cassette on the rear. Just perfect for commuting really. I love all the sort of open countryside stuff. Almost feels like Belgium even though it's in the northwest in, in Lancashire. It gives me that versatility to be able to uh, ride on the road with your regular road riders but then also uh, go and take it off road when I feel like it. Considering I've got 650B wheels I do pretty well. Um, I can go really fast if I want to. Uh, keeping up with guys on the road at like 18 mile an hour if I wanted. Um, but I've got the comfort when I want to be able to just cruise. And cruise for a long distance on my own. I call it my mobile meditation. So I'll just get on the bike, go out for a ride, clears my mind, have fun. I've met loads of people doing it and, and you know, I'm part of like a, a really nice community now. So, yeah, I, it's it's a massive part of my life and it's my enjoyment, my hobby. For me now, being on the bike is about making sure when I'm on the bike, I'm enjoying myself. And I think that's where the CGR comes in because I like to explore, adventure, find new routes, set off in a direction I might not know exactly where I'm going. In doing that, you don't know what kind of terrain you're going to come across. Yeah, there's no such thing as bad weather, as they say. It's just bad clothing. As long as you've got mud guards on the bike, uh, yeah, a bit of rain isn't on you at all. If the weather's poor, I'll stick to the roads. But if it's a bit nicer, a bit drier, uh, you can go down the, the canal towpath, go a little bit further afield and get a bit more adventurous. Perfect. So moving on from our CGR range, we had the question just now, can the CGR be built with flat bars? Moving to our hybrid trail, we can see that this guy offers us exactly that. A flat bar build with a 1x11 drivetrain system on a 29-inch wheel. We also have our hybrid AL here at the back with that same 1x11 group set. The fully loaded version here with that pannier rack mount and a full mudguard as well. Now, these guys come into play for your cyclist who does not want to do sportives, who does not want to be a racer, and who just wants a bike to have in the garage, to go and ride with the kids with, or to take on holiday with. These guys are perfect for your commuters, your city commuters, and also just for somebody who's looking for a bike to quickly take down to the shop uh, to go for a weekly shop and to just go and get a loaf of bread or something. So yes, these bikes, as we can see, also fully customizable through the bike building process. The hybrid trail here features not only those 29-inch wheels, but with these gravel tires as well. A coil suspension front fork in the front with a lockout mechanism on the handlebar and hydraulic disc brakes. The same on the hybrid AL there with the disc brakes. These, the, the, the hybrid AL is also available in a leisure build with a 650B wheel and a nice wide 47 uh, millimeter tire for leisure purposes, just like it said. We have another version of this available in a two by eight group set, which is our commuter. You will find all these products on, excuse me, online on the product pages. Um, Katie, do we have questions regarding these two products over here? 
Yes, we've got a question from Michelle asking, is there a basket option for the hybrid AL? That is a very good question, Michelle. Most definitely we do. They are on the bike builder available. The wicker baskets, which is absolutely gorgeous. They look beautiful in front of the bike there. Please have a look there on the bike builder where you will be able to make your selection for them. Is the rear rack removable? It is most definitely, as is the mud guard. So should come summertime. I know I removed my mud guards two days ago off of my bike with the weather changing. So yes, the pannier rack is fully removable as the mud guards as well for the summer months that you don't need it to take them off. Uh, take a little bit of weight off the bike and it just adds to the aesthetic look of the bike as well. Hannah is also asking, um, looking at the hybrid um, AL, what extras does the fully loaded version come with? So the fully loaded version, Hannah, will come with those mud guards, as I mentioned, a pannier rack, a bell, and then a front USB rechargeable light and a rear red flashing USB rechargeable light. Perfect for commuting purposes, perfect for riding in the, in the city streets, on the streets as well. Another question is, do the brown leather saddle and grips come as standard? They are an option as a selectable build, yes, but this will be the default selection that you will get on the bike build. They come in the two color variations, this beautiful brown and then a black as well. And then the upgrade features to the build will be a standard Pro Logo saddle with the rubberized uh, grips, lock-on grips as well there. Uh, one last question is, um, do these bikes come with pedals? These bikes do come with pedals. So when you do place your purchase, you will see through the bike building process that your pedals will already be allocated for you, ready to get out the box and to go ride. We had a question earlier on regarding how long does it take to build the bike when it arrives, and that's exactly it. We've had a couple of customers posting their videos on how long it exactly takes. It's about four minutes with a formal Allen key. You will be able to put the handlebar into the stem, fit the pedals, fit your saddle, and you will be ready to go. The gears will be indexed, the tires will be pumped. You can ride your bike out the box. Perfect. That's all the questions are off now. Outstanding. Perfect. I think we're going to cut to another video now where we are going to move on to our e-bike range. So there we go, the long-awaited, anticipated, I know a lot of our viewers tonight has been waiting for this moment, our e-bike range. All these models, we have discussed our Endurance SL frame set over here, our Hybrid AL, which we just had a look at, and then our CGR AL as well. All three of these models share the same geometry as their non-E sister bikes in the range, so they are very similar in looks. And then as you can see, these guys here carry that e-bike motion X35 electronic drivetrain system. The pedal assist system in the bikes, which from the eye of, you can't even tell, is an e-bike. The battery built into the down tube with that rear hub offering 250 watts of power assistance level over three settable modes by yourself through a Bluetooth smartphone app. Through the app, you will connect to your bike and you will dictate to your system how much power you want in each mode. There are three modes, which is programmable, like I mentioned, offering you that pedal, excuse me, the pedal assistance that you require. Uh, not knowing, obviously, where you are riding, it is difficult to predict ranges, but on a fully charged battery, we have come to the conclusion that it will offer you around a range of 60 to 70 miles of riding, depending on your settings and where you ride, of course. These bikes are also available through the bike building process 
to customize the custom color, as you can see on this SLE, uh, that carbon fiber body, which is one of our lightest production bikes, coming in at 11.2 kilograms. Very nice and lightweight with the carbon wheels and the SRAM RED system on there. Uh, like I mentioned, the custom color, which is available as well. And yes, these bikes are very, very great. They offer you a lot of riding uh, possibilities to continue riding, to ride further for longer. Our demographic for these bikes is not a certain class of cyclist. It is a cross range aimed at everyone who wants to enjoy cycling for longer. We have customers from everywhere trying them and riding them and is very, very happy with them thus far. Now, I'm sure there is already a line of questions lined up, so please, let's have those, Katie, if you have them available. And so Ruben has asked, can you ride the bike without assistance? Most definitely you can. You can ride the bike in an off mode as well. That's a very good question as well. With the power motor being in the hub and the cassette moving freely on its own free hub body, the mechanical drive train part of the bike operates just like a traditional bicycle. You can ride the bike in an off mode without any resistance on the rear wheel or without any drag because it lives on its own axle and its own free hub. As soon as you require some assistance, you will just turn the bike on and you immediately have it to your settable mode, freely available to get up those steep hills in your local areas. So Paul is asking, is there a lifespan um, of the battery and is it replaceable? Most definitely the battery is replaceable. Of course it is. Uh, it lives in the down tube, like we said, and it is placed into the bike through an access hatch right at the bottom of the BB, held together with those three lugs. Now, as all the batteries, there is a lifespan on it, which is about 550 life cycles from a 0% to a 100% charge. E-bike motion also uh, uh, issues uh, a, a notification not to deplete the battery to 0%, but to always keep a charge of at least 10% in the battery. Very quickly, I had a customer the other day who said, out of the top of his head, 550 cycles, oh, that's two charges a week for five years. So if you want to go do the math, that is about how much you are going to get from that battery. But of course, we all go through months where we don't ride our bikes as well, which also holds a charge. As long as the battery is charged up, it holds a charge and your battery will remain healthy for a much longer time. Uh, Nikki's asking, can you take these bikes on flights given the battery? You will not, unfortunately, Nikki. Obviously, with the restrictions with airline travel, these bikes will not be able to go on airlines. And then go back to the battery again. Um, how do they actually charge? Oh, so that's a very good question. Yes, being in the bike and built into the bike, they are non-removable for charging. So you do have a central charging port right above the BB where I'm pointing, where you will then charge the bike with your compatible charger. It's got a charging cable of about two meters width. So in the conservatory or in the shed, if you have power in the shed, you will be able to charge up your bike. I think that is all the questions. Oh, actually, we've just got one more. One more, um, yes. This is our e-bike. So very exciting range, guys, please. I know we're talking about how light they are. Yes. How, can you just go over the, the weights of the... Most definitely, bike? yes. So looking at the Endurance SLE, that carbon fiber construction by coming in at around 11.2 kilograms, depending on the finishing kit that you put on it, obviously it goes higher with the, uh, the, the finishing kit that is on the bikes, but our top spec coming in at that weight, nice and lightweight, easy to load on the back of the camper van or into the camper van if you have to. If you're looking more for something to potter about town, the hybrid ALE, or the CGR ALE, that gravel range, uh, coming in at about 13.6 kilograms. So again, not a very heavy bike to pick up. Um, there are bikes, uh, mountain bikes. I had a mountain bike that weighed almost 13 kilograms. So to think that this is an e-bike that weighs that much, it is really a lightweight bike in its own class and aesthetically not even looking like an e-bike. Okay, James is asking, can you get a spare battery? James, yes, most definitely you can get a spare battery. This is the battery range extender from e-bike motion, which is available as an accessory to go onto the bike. This fits neatly onto a bottle cage mount on the bike over there, offering you exactly that, a range extension. This will not offer you more power in any way because this charges the primary battery to which the motor operates from. This is exactly just that, a range extender allowing you to ride further 
and for longer. Nicole is enjoying the uh, the purple and grey bike. She's asking how does she get that colour? Nicole, you will go online and you will place your order through the bike building process. If you have an alter alterations as specific as this, please get in touch to our customer service line with your order number where we will be happy to discuss how you want your paint job to look. Uh, Claire is also asking, how does the electric assistance feel to the rider? She's saying that she doesn't, she doesn't want to feel like she's not trying. Oh, most definitely. That is the reason for that versatility, for that user friendliness of the app. Uh, Nicole, if you want to ride your bike with very low power assistance levels, you set it that way. It is as easy as taking out your smartphone, connecting to the bike, adjusting your levels to your desired level, putting your phone away and immediately have that power assistance or don't have that power assistance that you require. So it is very, very simple. It is very easy to do and it is very user friendly, like we mentioned. It's as simple as getting on the bike, riding it in an off mode and then finding out where your power assistance that you require lies. Obviously, you need to go and ride around your local hills and your local routes so that you can find out exactly how it works. A bit of trial and error, a couple of rides maybe to figure out exactly which power assistance level, in which cadence, in which gear offers you that optimum assistance that you need. Uh, Keith has asked, how long does it take to charge the battery to full? So, Keith, we have had these bikes here in the showroom charge them up from about 10% to 100% in about two hours. So it's not a long charge. It is definitely something if you are going bike packing on the CGR AL and you take your charger with you that you can do at the hostel or the, 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 the um, uh, hotel where you're staying at overnight. It's a quick charge and then it's ready for the next day. Uh, Colin has asked, how reliable is the assistance of the e-bike and what maintenance is required? Colin, it's a very, very reliable system. Being hub driven and a closed unit, it is watertight as well. So a very little maintenance needed on it. With that said, e-bike motion issues a two-year warranty as well, to which we are the service center. So if you have any issues, you will get back in touch with us and we will sort that out for you. Also, another quick question is, can I get custom color on an e-bike? You can most definitely. The entire range is available in custom color, the hybrid ALE, the CGR, and of course, as you can see, the endurance SLE as well. And Graham is asking, is the battery locked in to avoid people stealing the battery? Uh, it's a good way of looking at it, yes. <laughs> so definitely the battery is locked in there to avoid people stealing it. But the reason for it is the battery is locked into the frame uh, with the three lugs holding it into place for the internal cabling. So therefore it's non-removable. The charging port is connected to the battery internally. And obviously your iWalk button on the top tube is connected through the, the head tube to the top of the battery here. So therefore the battery is locked into place. But I like where you're coming from. It's so that people can't steal it, yes. <laughs> uh, one last question is, what is the maximum range when using the battery extender? The maximum range when you're using the battery extender, like we've discussed now, really depends on how your settings is set. If you have all three, your levels set to 100%, your range extender with your primary battery will most probably give you about 60 mile range, which isn't a lot. But if you adjust your power assistance levels to your required needs, if you use it when you need to and don't use it when you don't want to, who knows? I have had customer testimonials without the range extender just on the primary battery in the bike doing 110 mile rides on a single charge. So it's limitless. It really is how you have your settings set. That's it for the questions. Outstanding, perfect. We are going to move on to a more specialized range that we offer here at Ribble. Please stay tuned until we see you just now. power it generates straight away it's incredible isn't it so smooth oh, i could do this all day now <laughs> <laughs> it's impressive that. yeah 
four, we want four. <laughs> Mommy, it's getting more than 60 miles a day. Is it? It's the assistance is quite large. It's lovely, I'll have six. Oh, bloody hell, that's lovely. <laughs> this is so smooth. It's unreal. You'd never noticed that this was an electric bike. Well, I can lift it up one handed. <laughs> Welcome back guys. So here we are going to look, have a look at more of our specialist bikes that we do here at Ribble. Our Eliminator track bike there, a pure racing machine for the track. And then obviously our Ultra Tri and TT frame sets over here, which is our fastest bike that we have fine tuned over rigorous testing. It was developed by our R&D team using the UK's leading time trial and aerodynamic specialist Dan Bigham who we worked with as well there on these bikes they are great they are fast and the two models the three models that's available in the different spec depending on the purpose that you want to use it for so starting with the display model that we have here our ultra tri which comes with that tri front fork the hydration bottle in the front feeding top tube bag and tool bottle at the back we can see there that it is ready for to take on any Ironman that you can throw at it. Having numerous Ironman champions ridden on these bikes and won as well half Ironman and full Ironman races, they are very, very quick. Through testing these bikes, we have come to the, um, uh, the, the, the tests have shown us the results that with a rider and with the triathlon pack in the front, the hydration bottle, and the top tube feeding bag offering 30.1% less drag than without them. So you can hear these bikes are very, very fast. The TTR being our fastest bike that will be without the hydration bottle in the front with the TTR front fork um, being not UCI legal if you are not entering or competing in UCI regulated events, the TTR model will be the one for you. Alternatively, if you are looking for those uh, uh, UCI legal races that you want to enter, we have our TT model, which has the TT front fork on it uh, that is UCI compliant and which our pro team races on as well. These tests have also that we've done on these bikes shown us that over a 23 second based test, over a 25 mile ride, Average speeds of up to 29 miles an hour. So you can hear the fast, they are quick, they blade shaped, and they are meant to go forward quickly. <laughs> Moving on to the eliminator here at the back, we have the two pre spec builds on our product pages available for you to look at. There's an enthusiast build, and then here displayed with the TR51 carbon tubular wheels, the pro build with the carbon handlebars. Nice, light, and agile direct power transfer with that BSA threaded bottom bracket. These bikes are also meant to race on the track and enjoy where you are using them. Do we have questions regarding these two very specialist bikes here, Katie? Yes, Josh is asking, I'm debating whether to get a tri bike as he's wanting to take triathlon more seriously next year. Just how much benefit is there to a tri bike versus the aer aero road bike? Well, Josh, there you answered your own question. The Aero road bike is exactly that. The Aero 883 is more of a road bike. Depending on the triathlons you are going to be doing, if they whether they sprint or Olympic distance, I would say the Aero 883 would suit you just well. If you are looking to do something a bit more hardcore, like a half Ironman or even a full Ironman, the TT, the tri bike is definitely the one to go for, offering you much more comfortability over longer, longer distances than the Aero 883. Ada's asked, I think we've already covered this, but he, um, they ask, why does the TTR fork look different to the standard Ultra TT? Well, there we go. That's exactly the reason why is the UCI regulations between the two. So the UCI regulated front fork has to be a certain width, uh, whereas on the TTR fork, if you're not competing in those, has a much bigger blade to cut through the wind. Uh, Paul has asked, 
I've seen Adam Bowden on, um, he has a red Ribble Ultra Try. Is that a standard right. colour? That's right. Sorry, say again. Is that a standard colour? That is not a standard colour. That is a custom colour. So through the custom colour page on the bike builder, you will be able to select those exact colours and mimic it. Also, another question is, can I ride the Eliminator on the road? The Eliminator, you can most definitely ride on the road. You will not be able to fit, fit brakes to it, though. It is a specialist track bike. Please head over to the product page where we have the 725S available for more of a road fixie, a road single speed bike to ride. This will come with brakes fitted depending on the build that you select, either fixed gear or single speed. So please have a look at the 725S under the column hybrid bikes. One of the questions, can I buy the Ultra as frame set only? Most definitely you can. All three of the specs are available just as a frame set. The TT, the TTR, and then the tri bike as well. The differences obviously between them will be the, um, uh, the triathlon accessory pack that comes on the triathlon bike and those aero covers, those brake covers on the front, those 3D printed aero brake covers on the front and the rear brakes as well. That is pretty much all the questions for now. Outstanding, perfect. So we are going to move on to some more of our range. Please have a look at the next video and we'll see you just now. Perfect, guys. Welcome back. So now we are moving on to more of a, a off-road <laughs> section of our bikes. As you can tell from behind me, our very excited, very newly launched mountain bikes, our HT725 steel frame, that Reynolds steel frame bike, and then the titanium bikes as well. That titanium tubing there, nice and lightweight, nice and strong. The 725 obviously being very, very compliant, very planted ride as well. Both these bikes share the same geometry with that 42 millimeter head tube at a 60 degree angle, capable of taking 150 mil of travel front fork. These bikes have also been tested by our own product team and been ridden. So very comfortable bikes, very nice bikes. Oversized gussets on the high stressed areas to keep the frame integrity strong. Uh, the titanium frame, that composure, the, the, the composition of it in a 3AL 2.5V tie frame, um, which is a very lightweight, very strong material. Hand weld frames, both of them. Um, the 725 steel coming available in those different color packs that you can choose from, seven of them, uh, through the bike welding process. You can have a look at them. Both of these models will come with a BSA threaded bottom bracket for ease of maintenance and for stiffness as well. We know that they are easy to work with, and they are both fitted with that Eagle 1x12 drivetrain systems, starting at the SX, moving up all the way to the tire to the XX1 Eagle over there. We will take questions on these bikes. Let's quickly have a look here at our Adventure range as well. The Adventure 725 with its titanium sister as well, sharing again the same geometry, both in the steel and the titanium models there. Perfect for long distance touring. These guys are built to take you anywhere slowly. So load up your luggage, go away for a couple of weeks and enjoy touring. The D-bar is offering you a lot of hand positions on the bike and a lot of fixing places for your lights, your Garmin GPSs, etc. And obviously a lot of luggage space. Fully compatible with a rack mount, both at the back and the front and fork mounts as well. These bikes, both the 725 and the steel, like we said, is capable to take you anywhere uh, on adventure rides. Moving to the back there, we have our CX range, our cyclocross racing range. Here displayed is our CX SL, our monocoque carbon fr construction frame. This also shares an AL version, which is available on the product pages online for you to look at. The CX SL here obviously being UCI legal as well. 
with that maximum tire capacity of 32 with the carbon tubby wheels. This is our pro build that we are looking at with that integrated level 5 bar and stem. The oversized BB area for aggressive power transfer, nice big triangle for picking up and shouldering the bike. And then obviously, like we said, that monocoque carbon construction, keeping the frame lightweight, stiff and strong, durable for racing. We can see with the level five integration here, that cleanliness of the front end. We know washing cyclocross bikes is nobody's favorite thing to do. So having the cables out the way makes it just so much easier. Going over to some questions, Katie, I'm sure we have a couple. So Kane is asking, can you fit dropper posts to the Adventure 725? The Adventure 725 can fit a dropper post. It will be a manual dropper post, the one with the lever underneath the saddle. Uh, due to cable routing through the frame, unfortunately not a remote one, but you can fit a manual operated one. Uh, Paddy's asking, all your bikes have the drop seat stays. Is that for aesthetics or is there a benefit to it? There is definitely a benefit to it. The drop seat stays offering you that vertical compliance on the seat tube there through riding, um, making the triangle at the back smaller to enhance your power transfer from your pedal stroke into the wheel turn um, is the reason for the drop stays there, both on the SL as well. I'm sorry we haven't covered this before, but yes, that's a very good question as well. Uh, do the bags come as standard with the Adventure 725? Do the what come the as standard? The bags, the bags, no. The bags, unfortunately, will not come as standard. This is for display purposes. We make use of the Restrap range, which is a company based in Yorkshire. Uh, so they are added accessories through the bike building process or the accessories page on our online store. Another quick question is, what are the funky bars on the adventure bike? Can you change that? <laughs> they are very cool, aren't they? Yes, you can change them. These are known as D-bars or loop bars. Um, this is more for a position uh, enhancement on the bike. If you are having a bike like this, obviously you are going to be covering a long distance of rides on a daily basis. So you want to be comfortable. The D-bar offering you a very comfortable sitting position. And like we mentioned, loads of space to move your hands around or to fit lights and GPS units too. Um, one other quick question is, how much does the tie weigh? How much does the tie weigh? The titanium adventure bike or the yeah. HD bike? The adventure. The adventure tie bike. Uh, it is difficult to say, again, with that finishing kit options that we have on the bikes, they come in roughly at about 11 kilograms. So, yes, depending on the, the, the frame spec and the wheel spec that you put on it, it is difficult to say. But, yes, around 11 kilogram mark. And that's pretty much it for the questions now. Yeah. Outstanding. Nothing on the mountain bikes any further. We could cover them a little bit more. Uh, you will see through the bike building process that obviously we have uh, tire selection choices there, up to a 2.6 millimeter uh, inch tire there in that 650B wheel build as well. We had a question earlier on on our previous broadcast, can I fit the 160 mil travel to the bike? You will mess up the geometry a little bit, but yes, you are capable of fitting that. Um, other questions that we might have? Maybe now in the time that we've spoken about it. No. One other quick question. Um, someone's asking, can they change the purple details? Most definitely. We've just mentioned it as well. The HD 725 uh, will come with that seven option colorway spec for you to choose from. That colorway includes your headset, your decal color on the, uh, on the side, your top tube cap, your seat post clamp, and then obviously your decals on the wheel as well. All the questions are off now. That's outstanding, perfect. So we are going to cut to another video and then we are going to move to a Q&A.
Welcome back, guys. So we are now going to open up our channels for some live questions. If you have any queries, please fire them my way. I will be happy to answer them as far as possible. Alternatively, should you miss any of our questions, please get in touch with us through our Go Install Live video call service. This is a one-way service. We will not be able to see you. Uh, you will only be able to see us and communicate with us. We will be able to cover individual one-to-one -one questions you might have on any of the products that you saw today. Katie, do we have any questions from our viewers at home? To reduce stretching when on the drops. Uh, you can most definitely. Uh, we have stems available through our accessories page. Is this a already purchased bike, Malcolm? If so, they are standard industry sizes. You will be able to find them on our website if you have a look for them, yes. Paul is asking, would S the SL be better for everyday comfort? I'm looking to switch to disc when replacing my current road bike. Uh, depends on your current road bike, Paul. You know, if you are a rider, if you commute on a daily basis, this is a very good option for you. Uh, if you are riding it into work and leaving it, locking it up, do you really want to put your carbon bike on a lock? Alternatively, have a look at the RH72, which will offer you the same options over there. The Endurance AL disc also comes into play for that purpose for driving to work and locking it up. But if you want it for an out and out riding bike, then yes, it is a very good competitor. Dean is asking, my wife is five foot tall. What's the smallest frame size available? So at five foot, we offer extra small frame sets. And in our CGR AL range, we now offer two X small frame sets, which is, if I am correct, a 45 centimeter C-tube bike. So yes, definitely worth a look at. And is ordering and delivery still going ahead at the minute? Most definitely we are. If everything is in stock, we are looking at about five day turnaround time, allowing two to three days for dispatch delivery. But yes, the, uh, all the stock is in stock. We are working on about five days turnaround for you to get you on your bike and make use of that one cycle a day token that we have. And what types of finishes are available in the custom color? So are the matte, gloss, and glitter? Well, there we go. Yes, you are. The answer, the, the question, the answer is in the question. <laughs> the three that, that we have there is obviously the glitter finish, which we can see, uh, which we saw on the, the SLE earlier on, a matte finish, and then a gloss paint finish as well that we have available through the bike building process that you can make a selection of. Johnny's asking, can you change the battery in the e-bikes? Uh, so, John, yes, you, thank you for tuning in. We did cover that. You can change the battery, obviously, just for warranty and replacement purposes. It is not advisable to try and take the battery out at home as there is internal cables and wiring connected to that battery. But, yes, it can be removed. Alexis is asking, what wheel set upgrades are available? On... Does she say a bike, maybe? Not specifically. Not I specifically. So, Alexis, yes, you're, depending on the model that you are looking at, please have a look through the bike builder. There is wheel section available there where you can have a look at the different wheels we offer on different products. Uh, so, for example, the SL range comes from Axiom disc wheels to Sirium wheels to level carbon wheels to Mavic cosmic wheels to zip wheels. So there's a wide selection of wheel and tire upgrades available on your build. Uh, we have just covered this, but um, someone's asking, if I order my bike today, how long will it take to be delivered? So if you order your bike today being Friday, obviously the working day will start on Monday. So hopefully by next week, Friday, if all goes to plan, that five-day turnaround, hopefully with transport and couriering it allow in there as well, we, we should have your bike in a week, in about a week, week's time. I mean, this is a very personal question, but it's asking, if you could get any Ribble bike in any spec, what would it be? If I can get any Ribble bike in any spec, yeah. I would have to say it will have to be the one that I already have, which is the CGR 725, my favorite. I am a very avid hashtag, still is real, guys. So, yes, that would be my bike. Um, thank you for the question, by the way, yes. Uh, Jeff is asking, what components does um, our level brand cover? So the Level brand is our in-house accessories brand to bike builds. That includes seat posts, stems, handlebars, and now also with the add of wheel sets as well. We do top caps as displayed on all our bikes, bar ends, and seat post clamps. Those are all our in-house accessories brands. The next level technologies, feel free to go and have a look at our Instagram page where you can follow and like our posts as well. 
Another question is, I saw a video of the new uh, level jockey wheel available um, on the Ribble Pro Team video. Is this available as an upgrade? That is most definitely an available upgrade. They are in the bike builder process. If they are not, feel free to get in touch with us and we can make that available for you. I've had one question for me actually saying, will you do a hill climb on an e-bike versus my SL? Uh, just to show the time difference, 100%. When we're all back to um to, to regular life and yeah i'll definitely that's go out it. and get that filmed and, i think uh, that's a very good that, that, that's a very good uh video to shoot as well definitely. to have one rider ride on both bikes yeah up the same hill that's a very good uh, thank you thank you for the recommendation there yes you are viewer thank good you good idea yes um, <laughs> another question is can you attach a garmin to the integrated bars on an sl most definitely that is also a very good question it is something we did not cover but the level five integrated bar and stem most definitely can Fit a Garmin mount. It is a aero mount. I have the bars right over here, which has got a mounting bracket right at the bottom of the stem. We have online the added accessory both in Garmin and Wahoo mounts to go with that GPS out front mount. Uh, if you have a look online, you will find the products. Well, Lucy's asking, can I still call for a one to one video call? You can, uh, even though the show is closed. As soon as the video, the broadcast has finished, we are more than happy to take your call. We are available as well. So please have a look online on the times we are available and feel free to contact us anytime. Darren is also asking, will you run your Tuesday night ride outs again? Uh, Darren, you're local. Yes, outstanding. Those will definitely come back into play as soon as everything has calmed down. And we have that permission again from the government to extend group, group events and meeting in more than... Uh, uh, more than five people at a time and closer than 2.5 meters as well. But yes, please keep an eye on our blog for that online. You will see the times and the dates posted to the Ribble Ride Out events, folks. For those of you who are not close by, it's a ride out we do every Tuesday afternoon here from Ribble HQ where we just go out and ride bikes. So Darren, if you're close by, yes, thank you very much for that question. We hope to see you soon as well. Another question is, can I finance a bike? That's a very good question as well. We do offer finance options across our entire range. We have partnered with V12 Finance, who is the official lender. So as you go through the bike building process, as soon as you are ready to check out, you can select finance as your checkout method of payment. And the web page will redirect you to V12 Finance, where you will fill in their independent application form. This will give you an immediate answer, whether it is approved or referred, and then take you back to our page to where the, pro the order that will then be processed. But yes, we do offer finance across the entire range. One other question about sizing. So if um, a person is between sizes, can your go in store guys help while the stores are actually closed? Most definitely we can help obviously as far as possible. Like I mentioned, the go in store service does not allow for us to see you. Um, so it will be difficult, but through measurements that you can give us over the phone, we can mock it up in store and we will be able to assist and advise you as close as possible uh, to getting the right size. Um, and the question, do you still have pre-spec bikes available at the outlet? We most definitely do have pre-spec bikes available in the outlet. These bikes are going online as we are speaking, so they will be available for you to go and look at as well. Um, as soon as they are online, you will be able to purchase these bikes through our online store and they are ready to be shipped out in 48 hours to your front door. Debs has asked, what warranty do you have on the bike? So all the Ribble bikes carry a three-year warranty from us here at Ribble, and then obviously the independent components, Shimano, Mavic, will cover their own, will carry their own warranty with them as well. I think that is pretty much it for the questions. That is outstanding. Yeah. Perfect. Yes. Katie, I know we're going to go to you now. So from my side, viewers, thank you very much for watching tonight. And thank you for uh, going through our range of us. We are very excited about the service that we are offering. Again, I want to exclaim on, should you want to get in touch with us, please make use of our channels, be it either through email, through telephone, or through our live go-in-store service. We will be happy to take your calls. Again, thank you for watching. Goodbye and good night. Yeah, I just want to say thank you as well to Yaku. Um, and we just want to also mention that we are offering a 10% discount to all emergency service staff. So... If you are wanting to do that, then you can get in touch with us to, to get that discount. So, yeah, thank you so much for tuning in and, yeah, just stay safe.